welcome this is ninja bot painting and this is our next easy painting tutorial where we'll be doing the one and only carnage from marvel crisis protocol follow along today and we'll get you looking right so i want to start today's tutorial off with saying the difference between talent and technique so talent is when you have a blank canvas and you're able to see what you want it to look like before you start painting. Technique is making the paint on the canvas look a certain way. I can't guarantee that you have talent, but I can guarantee that with a little bit of practice, you have technique. So we're gonna to start today off by applying what I always refer to as the pajama coat onto carnage. We're gonna get everything red. We're pretty much just going to paint the entire model red. Now, because this model ended up taking a little bit longer filming wise than some of the other models I've done, and I don't want to produce a longer painting video than I have to, but I still want you to see all the painting so that you can see what you're going to be doing instead of just seeing me paint a single arm and then pop and the entire model is done. We're going to have some cuts where you're not going to see everything that I do. So if that's a little unusual for us here, but we're going to do that mostly to save for a little bit of time, but still give you the same experience. So follow along, get your Mephist in red, and paint the entire model. All right, with a solid base coat down, the next thing we're going to do may seem a little redundant, but given the way that this model is set up and all of these little nooks and crannies, I can just about guarantee that somewhere in this model, we didn't get something red. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the contrast paint, which is naturally very good at flowing into all the cracks and crevices, and we're just going to go over everything again. Now, this is going to make sure that we don't have any little spot of primer that we can still see that we're not going to notice until way later and then we're going to have to have a hard time fixing it. This is going to give us a nice solid workable start so that we don't have to concern ourselves with that. In fact, I can see one right in his jaw as the model is turning and we're going to get that with this contrast paint and then it's not going to be there anymore and we'll be able to go to our next step. So take your time coat everything in red. This is still the pajama stage, so just put it on and don't sweat it. Right, with a nice solid red base coat, we're going to do something that may seem a little wacky at first, but trust me, it's going to help. We're going to take Darkoven Nightshade, which is a blue wash from Citadel. And we're gonna wash the entire model. Now I can imagine that after having painted this red twice, shading it blue is probably not anybody's idea of a fun thing to do. But what this is gonna do for us is it's gonna make the recesses in between the veins and the bulk of his flesh a dark purple. And since his veins are all gonna be black, it'll create a smoother transition that seems more natural and less artificial between the red of his flesh and the red of his muscles and the veins that are going to be black. So just go through and apply a generous layer. Don't let it pool. Try to make sure that you're getting it on both sides of the veins on each vein because that's really what's important here. This is also going to help us better identify where the veins are. We're going to do some dry brushing in a little bit and between the shade and the dry brushing we're going to make those veins as easy to see as we possibly can. All right now we're going to start making some magic. So the first thing we're going to do is take our Mephiston Red and we're going to dab most of it off on a tissue. This is a preparation for dry brushing, which is a painting technique that is absolutely perfect for what we need right now. Once you've got most of the paint off, we're just gonna rub the brush vigorously across the model. And it will leave paint on the raised areas. 
And this is gonna do two things. It's going to make all of the veins much easier to see. And because we're going to put a little bit of vigor into it and we're gonna push a little harder than we would have normally, it's also going to get the center of the muscle in between the veins red. We're gonna spend probably half of this model painting the black veins and the other half of this model painting or dry brushing red. So don't threat and don't worry, just take your time. Go through until the model really looks red again. Try not to get the recesses where we put that shade because we still want the shade to do its work. And we're gonna add some intensity layers of dry brushing here in a little bit. But for this step, just go back and forth until you get to where you're happy with it. So now we're gonna take half Mephiston Red and half Clear Orange and we're gonna make a puddle. You're gonna to wanna to make about a two drop puddle of each of these. Mix them together and then you're gonna do the exact same thing you just did for your red dry brush with your new orange red color. Now it's important this time, instead of being real vigorous about it, you're gonna be a little more gentle. We don't wanna get as much of the muscle as we did last time. The idea here is that you want to layer up to a brighter intensity and in color and if you get all of the places that you made red, there'll be no transition, it'll just be this orange red. So just gently go back and forth, smush it into the muscles where you have to, really focus on the top of his chest, the top of his thighs, the top of his arms, and the top of his head. Since if you imagine light coming down from directly above him, those parts of his body will be brighter. So those are the parts you want to focus on. Whereas the parts underneath his pectoral, underneath his thigh, the underside of his arms, those you can keep pretty dark red because they don't have any direct light source. So it looks natural when they're darker. So just go through and do this as much or as little as you want. Really, at this point, I think that it's worth doing a lot of this, this brighter color, because I think it's really going to help. And as a bonus, as you're highlighting the veins, the veins will be much easier to see when we get to that step later. So now we're going to take our Flash Gets Yellow, which is a very bright yellow, and we're going to add roughly a drop's worth to our half and half mixture of orange and of red. Once we get that all mixed down, we're going to have a much more vibrant, almost orange red going on. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to highlight again. This time we're going to do even less than we did previously, and we're going to try to focus mostly on those spots I mentioned previously that are largely going to be affected by light. You're gonna want the tops of the thighs, the tops of the chest, the top of the head, the tops of the arms, and those are really gonna be your focal points. Just keep going around and adding more and more highlight as you go and it'll get more and more orange and it is going to give us a brighter and brighter look to him. Don't mind the cat, she's a kitten, her name is Stryker.
So now we're going to add a little bit more yellow just to get it a little bit brighter than it was. At this point it's almost orange. So we're just going to touch a little bit of these top places. Same places we've been going over this whole time. Now we're doing it lightly and gently. Alright, next we're going to use Gray Seer and we're going to lay down the foundation of Carnage's eyes. So what you're going to want to do is make sure your paint is the right consistency. We're aiming for about 2% milk here and you're going to start from the middle of his eye and you're going to pull outwards gently towards the edges. It's important to do it this way because if you don't, you're more likely to get the paint outside of where you want it. And Gray Seer is a fantastic white. It covers really well and it's nice and dark in the white spectrum so that it's easy to add to with other colors. So just go through and do that. Again, take your time, pull out from the middle and pull your way to the edges. You'll have a lot more success with that. If you do make a mistake, don't sweat it. It's not the end of the world. We're gonna be doing a lot of touch-ups on this model. So remember what I say more often than not. Do it and we'll tidy it up later. So now it's time to get into the nitty gritty of this model. This is easily the most challenging part, and this is the part you're gonna to need to spend the most time with. We're gonna go in and we're gonna start painting all of these veins black. So just go in, pick a vein, pick a section of the model, and work on that section for a little while. Take a break. Make sure that if you feel yourself getting frustrated, you stop. It's real easy to get overwhelmed with this because there's so many veins to do and they're all one color black. So just go through, do them one at a time, take your time, you know, don't threat too much if you make a mistake. We're gonna go back and fix a whole bunch of mistakes as we go. So just kind of do the best you can with it and do it slowly and do it steadily. All right, so next up we're gonna take our clear orange and our Mephisto red and we're gonna water it down a little more than usual and we're gonna start going in and just kind of painting some of these squares and these shapes in between the veins. Now, because this is a lighter color, it's important to really focus hard on the areas that you know are gonna be lighter from when we were dry brushing earlier. This gives you a chance to fix any mistakes. So if you've got a vein that got a little away from you and the black bled into the red, this will give you a chance to fix it. And this, because it's the lighter of the colors we've used so far, gives you a chance to make sure that all the areas that would be catching light are a brighter color. As long as you keep the paint a little thinner than you would normally, you should be able to go right on top of your previous colors and bring that bright, vibrant back without distorting it and without losing the depth that you created with all that dry brushing and the wash. All right, and now we're back to black. We're gonna go in and we're gonna paint some more of these veins. Anything that you missed, what you're gonna kinda notice as you do this model is you're gonna do a section and then look and realize that you didn't do another section and you're just gonna have to kinda go back and forth and back and forth, switching between adding the black and adding the various reds. Don't let it get you frustrated. It's gonna work out. You're just gonna have to be patient with it. Alright, so feeling pretty good about having most of the black covered, we're going to go back with cold white and we're going to paint the center of Carnage's eyes. Don't worry too much about getting all the way to the edges, just make sure you get most of it filled. I wouldn't usually use such a harsh white, but for Carnage specifically, it actually works out really well. 
Then we're gonna go to German Gray and we're gonna paint over the veins on all of the top areas. So top of the chest, top of the thighs, top of the arms, top of the head, and around his mouth and teeth. Now since his mouth and teeth are going to be really hard to see anyway, we're going to start this process of making them brighter so that it's easier to see them from a distance. One of the other things that you'll be able to do during this step is find veins that you missed previously and go ahead and touch those up as well while you've already got the black in. This will create some kind of random bits of lighter color along the black which will give it a more natural appearance but it also give you a chance to fix anything that you missed in the earlier stages. We're going to cut German gray with dark sea gray in about a 50-50. And we're just going to do the same thing we just did, we're just not going to do as much. So what we want to focus on here is any of these really main veins that catch a lot of light, anywhere where two or more veins meet, any veins that you missed earlier or overlooked at any time or just need touched up, and a lot of these veins that are up on top. You just go through, just like you've done with all the other steps, and add this lighter gray borderline black color to them. Once you finish that, we've got one more thing to do to these veins and we can call it a day. All right, and finally, we're going to take dark sea gray by itself, and we are going to make a few choice highlights. So the key here is to find spots where two pieces of vein touch and just highlight where they touch. You don't want to use a lot of this. This is one of those times where a little is going to go a long way. And you're going to look for places where two veins touch, places where veins end, and you want to get just the veins that are going to be visible from the top, all the ones that would have caught a lot of light. You're also going to want to use this to really make those teeth stand out because those teeth, you need to help them so that they can be seen. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a black blurry mess. So now we're at a really important step. At this point, you can stop if you want, but if you're willing to do the little bit of extra work, every single line that you put in from this point on is going to make him look significantly better. You're going to take your regular Mephisto Red and you're going to just touch where the red meets the veins anywhere that you had the black from the veins leak into the red. Anywhere that got it lost all its color from the black and from the shade. Anywhere that you can not really see where the vein starts and the muscle ends because it's gotten, you know, mostly because it's gotten the black from when we did the veins on it. So go through, use this red, just put it down right in wherever you see that you need it. Once it dries, it'll darken some to match the other colors around it. So don't be afraid to put it places, and the more of this that you do, the better it will look. Right, so, with all that done, the hard part is over and it's time to get this base. Now, for me, I decided I wanted to use a yellow base, mostly because it contrasts with the red very brightly and makes the entire model stand out a little bit. Since the model is mostly just red and black, it's nice to have something draw the eye. We're gonna paint the entire thing Avalon Sunset Yellow and then we're gonna give it a very heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade. Alright, with that dry, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, and for what I'm going to do, I actually am going to put a lot of it on there, because when it dries, it's going to make a dirty yellow look, which is what I want. 
Uh, and usually you wouldn't put it on this heavy, but as there's a look I'm actually going for, so there's a reason I'm gonna do it this way. All right, and with that, you did it, you made it, you're finished, we're done Carnage. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Have a great day, and remember to be kind to yourself. That you